Good morning. This is our weekend video, and uh, today it's uh, a, it's a teaching, but it's also a prayer request. So uh, we're going to get into that in just a moment. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you and ask you to lead by your Holy Spirit. You show us things that that um, that we're to be burdened about, the things that we're to be praying about in the days in which we live. And and Lord, you give us the 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 topic to pray about. You give us the intensity of the need and so on so we want to be led by your spirit as we present this this call to prayer today and this teaching on prayer in jesus name amen amen so today uh the burden of my heart and and the and the the, the uh, instruction of the holy spirit today about praying for our youth we really there's a great need in america right now and basically around the world the youth are having their minds and their attention drawn away by everything but the Lord and, and the importance of the Word of God, the importance of, of, of coming to know the Lord and to serve the Lord has been taken away from our youth. They've, they've been distracted in many, many ways. So uh, I'm putting out a call not only to receive this instruction today, but then daily to be praying for the youth of America in, the, in that age group from from 12, 13 to 25, uh, the, every, the media, uh, the uh, the uh, the merchandise people, everybody is focusing on that age group and trying to get their attention, trying to get their dollars, trying to take their mind away from anything other than the Lord. And so we want to be praying for our youth in America. There's intense it's not only in the natural, there's intense demonic influences too. There are unholy spirits trying to capture the attention of our young people. There's deep opposition and apathy toward the things of God. Oh, that's, that's not important. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to uh, be concerned about that Christian message. And that's what the demonic influences are telling our young people. They need salvation. Every soul, every man woman child no matter what age needs salvation and our youth have, are being uh, turned away from salvation by the lies of the enemy and the lives of the lies of the world uh revival they need a revival experience a, a spiritual shaking and awareness brought to them by the power of the holy spirit so we need to pray for our youth and pray for holy spirit revival and revelation to our young people we hear and we see reports uh, uh, of the beginning, the beginning of revivals on some of the college campuses and so on. And we just pray, we need to pray. Would you help me pray that this revival, this youth revival will spread and overtake the land. Just cover America. Pray, pray, pray. Don't stop praying for our young people. Uh, we need to invest. We need to invest prayer in our young people. Uh, they don't need more money. They don't need more toys and things to take their mind off the Lord. They need our prayers. We need to invest prayer in our young people. And we need to pray for spiritual blinders to come off, to be removed, that the light of the gospel can get through and pierce that, the, the minds, get into the minds and the hearts, take captive all that is resistance resistant to the truth of the gospel of Christ, that their minds will be open up to us to see who Jesus is and what he has done for them. Let's go to a scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. It says, the Apostle Paul writing to the church by the power of the Holy Spirit says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So their minds have been blinded by the God of this age. Who is the God of this age? Satan. Satan and all his evil workers are working overtime to try to keep the young people in blindness. They would like to turn all the nations of the on the face of the earth away from God and toward the things of unholy spirits and of the devil himself. This is the age in which the enemy is trying to condition men's hearts to receive the message of the Antichrist. 
And we need to pray for revival that young people will turn to God before that, that age begins. And then uh, let's look at um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verses uh, 4 and 5. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. We're in a spiritual war, and we're, we're not only in a spiritual war for the church to be, be, be maintained strong and healthy on the face of the earth and multiply, but we're in a spiritual war for the young people of America. It says, For we do not walk in the flesh, nor, nor, uh, nor do we war according to the flesh. Verse 3, verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshly or natural, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. We, have, we are spiritually equipped. We have spiritual weapons. We have the Word of God. We have the Spirit of God. We have the power of God. We have all the weapons necessary to do warfare against the enemy to pull down this darkness and, and this veil over the minds of the young people. And it says, verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And that, that's one thing that's happening right now. The enemy is at work trying to uh, bring all kinds of arguments and high things that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. And then it says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And that's what we need to pray for our young people, that they will surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ and that their thoughts, their minds, and their hearts will be kept, kept captive to the things of God rather than being enslaved by the things of this world. And so for the key influences of the world, the social media, the secular culture, uh, to be dramatically saved and, and transformed, uh, to give testimonies of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we need to pray for these key influencers on the social media and in the... In the uh, in the uh, movie industries and so on, television, to become believers in Christ and have a bold testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ to influence our young people. And then we also need to pray for the Holy Spirit to be poured out on school campuses from the middle school, uh, grammar schools, high schools, through colleges and universities, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our places of education so that these campuses... Uh, the Spirit of God will overtake the unholy spirits that are speaking untruth and, and tearing down the gospel of Christ in our educational system. Uh, thank God that we have Christian schools, but even some of the Christian schools are being influenced by the ways of the world. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to be poured out, not only in secular campuses, but also Christian campuses. And that God will send bold laborers into the harvest, those who are unafraid to preach the gospel of Christ, the full gospel of Christ, and teach the truth. Those who stand, and, and don't, we need to pray for those who will stand publicly for their faith, not shy away from standing publicly for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then a couple of other verses here in Matthew 9, verses 37 and 38. Now, these are the words of Jesus that said, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. And what's the remedy? Jesus says, Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now, if Jesus was saying this at his time, how much more, as we see the, the, the degradation, all, all, all the sin, the abominations on the face of the earth right now, uh, how much more is the harvest ripe and going bad? It's actually spoiling on the vine. Uh, people are not being brought into the kingdom. How much more are laborers needed to go out into the harvest? So we need to pray to the Lord and ask him to send out laborers into his harvest. That, uh, and then that they would go out. When people are going out and ministering, that they will be ministering in the power and the authority of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that signs and wonders, that miracles will follow the preaching and teaching of the gospel in meetings reaching this generation. Uh, the people, uh, the young people are looking for a sign that will convince them 
that the gospel is true. So we need to pray for wonders and miracles to take place uh, at following the word of God when people preach and teach the gospel of Christ that the young people would be convinced that this is God truly working with his people as they present the gospel. And we need to pray for the church to love and to receive and to embrace the newly saved generation uh, no matter what they look like, no matter what they sound like, when they, if they're seeking Christ, we need to welcome them into the churches. I remember in the 60s and 70s, there were churches that would forbid the hippies to come into their church. They, they wouldn't let them come in because they were barefoot and unbathed and needed a haircut or whatever, whatever excuse people were using. Uh, we need to welcome people into the church no matter what they look like, no matter what they, they wear, no matter what they smell like, uh, and welcome them into the church. Then faithfully disciple them to be strong disciples of Christ. It, we're to catch the fish, let the Lord clean them up. So you know, welcome them into the church, lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ, begin to teach them the gospel of Christ. Let the Lord do the refining in Jesus' name. Pray, pray, pray for the young people of, of our age, of this hour. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. Psalm 34 and 15, the, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and he, and he, he hears the, and the ears of the Lord are attentive to their cry. So we need, to, we need to draw close to the Lord. We can't call ourselves righteous if we're Christians and we're sinning. We need to repent, draw close to the Lord and cry out to him. Then he listens and he's attentive to our cry. He will answer the prayers. And then in James 5 and 16, it says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. The prayers of one righteous man that gives the example of Elijah he prayed and there was drought in the land and he prayed again and and the rain came uh, that was the prayer of one righteous person if if many righteous people begin to pray for the youth of America we're going to see youth revival like the world has never seen before so I call out to you pray 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 for our young people Pray, begin to train them at an early age when their babies sing to them, when their toddlers teach them uh, about the salvation of the Lord, teach them about the love of Jesus. Jesus loves me, this I know. We, teach the, we taught the children that for, for years. And I tell you, we, they need to be introduced to the Lord from a very early age, even before birth, sing over that unborn child. And then again, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And then Christians must pray for the young generation. We, we must, because I guarantee you, those that are involved in witchcraft, Satanism, all kinds of spiritualism, they're calling out to demons. They're praying to demonic spirits to, to give them power to try to capture the youth. All, there's all kinds of unholy forces trying to capture our youth and enslave them to the enemy. We need to pray for their freedom. We need to pray that their, the, the veil over their minds be taken away, that they can see the truth of the gospel of Christ and be saved and filled with his joy in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Our Lord, we come to you now. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to give us that burden that that burden will not lift from our hearts and our minds to pray, pray, pray every day for the young people, the youth of, of America, the youth of the world especially. And, to, and Lord, we pray that the, the darkness and the confusion, the distractions, every tool, every trick of the enemy be torn down so that the young people can hear and see and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for the church. There's a challenge to the church to receive young people no matter what they look like, no matter what they smell like. Bring them in. I remember those hippies, with, some were unbathed and people didn't want them in their churches. And, and they were, they, I've heard testimonies of numerous churches where they were received in and they gladly were saved and, and began to serve the Lord and became leaders of the church. I pray, Lord Jesus, that the church will have an open heart to receive all the youth and be prepared to teach them 
and to train them and disciple them in the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Another Bible study on uh, midweek in the book of uh, 1 Timothy.